So in order to make this construction, we're going to simply start by drawing a circle and it'll be the size of the heptagon. So you can adjust it to the size of your paper or whatever amount you'd like. Uh, but each of the corners is going to touch that circle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my diameter. I'm going to find the center point where my compass made a marking. And I put the pencil there first. It becomes more accurate. Then I draw the line. Oops, my ruler moved up a bit. And so this is my original line here. And we call this the diameter. The diameter is cutting a circle in half. So then checking to make sure my compass is still lined up properly and didn't move. It is lined up to the original circle. Uh, even sometimes when you're drawing, your lead will get smaller and it'll slightly move and it'll mess up your drawing. That's why when you do it on the computer, it's much more accurate. So I'm gonna just check to make sure that the radius is the same length. And so what I'm doing is I'm intersecting two circles in what we call the Vesica Pisces or Vesica Pisces. And we're going to see how this is radical three. Um, when compared the, to the diameter, so we're gonna look at the radius. So when I connect these two spots, this line here is like I said, is going to be radical three. So if I look at this whole radius, we can use the fraction here. Um, just to show you, right, since we use the same length of the radius from here to here is one, as well as from here to here to the edge of the circle. So let's first mark that as, as one. So this amount here is one. And this amount here is the same radius, so this is one. Okay, so if this whole amount is one, this is half. I want to find this amount here. So, I mean, where you're working with the fraction, we'll get radical three over two, so then this whole amount will be radical three. So let's, let's do the Pythagorean theorem. Here's our hypotenuse, x, oops, x squared plus one half squared equals one squared. Uh, we're gonna square one. Oops, we get one fourth. One squared, one half squared means one half times one half, which is one fourth, equals one times one, which is one. And I'm gonna subtract that on both sides. So x squared is going to be one take away one fourth will be three fourths. I will root both sides and I will get by our rule, we can separate them, radical 3 over radical 4, it's the same thing, and radical 4 we know is 2. When we take out 2 times 2, we take out a pair, and that's the square root of 4 is 2. So this amount here is radical 3 over 2, that's what we're going to be using. So this entire amount then would be double that, so radical 3 over 2 plus radical 3 over 2, is radical 3. So like we had mentioned, the vesica pieces is going to give you a radical 3 in relationship to the radius. And so that is a uh, irrational number. Um, when you get a square and get the diagonal of a square, you would actually get radical 2. So that's the way we would get that irrational number. Drawing two circles like this would give us radical 3. So we're going to actually use that amount. Here's the quick ending of how to draw our septagon. This was more about the, the number radical 3 over 2. We're going to use that amount from here to here, and that will give us our seven congruent spots. So let's pick a spot. Let me just pick a spot up here on top so the star is pointing upwards. And again, I'm gonna double check because I just bumped it. One, two, do that again. So without moving the compass, it should exactly fit seven times, give or take a little, because again, for speed here, we're trying to do it quickly. I would really want it to be a little bit more accurate. So it's a tiny bit off. But if you use the GeoGebra software or any math software, might as well use a ruler. You're going to see that it'll be exactly that amount. 
So this tells us that the sides of this heptagon or septagon, depending on what you're going to call it, are going to be radical three over two when compared to the radius of this circle when you're trying to inscribe that shape. So the radius is one. So that's a little bit of the math behind uh, a heptagon, how we use the radical three over two in order to find that. And makes me feel like I had a little bit of dessert as a math nerd. Hope that made a little bit of sense to some of you. Hopefully you could see that.